Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in this Unturned Map Editor tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to add trains to your custom map. Now today we are going to be doing some work in both the normal editor and the file system, and so I'll be showing you how to do all of this pretty quickly. So it is better if you start in the editor, so go to your favorite map or the map you want to have your trains in, and go ahead and load that up. Alright, so the nice thing about trains is that you don't have to use the dev kit for this, so we're going to be using the normal editor, and all you have to do is go into the road section, and once you're there, make sure you place a length of train track or normal road, because for some reason at this point, you are able to make these trains stick and follow the normal road as well. But once you place down your road length, what you're going to be looking at is the road index in the bottom left. Now this should be different for every piece of road that you have placed down. So for example, that's 0 and 1, and if I place down another one, it should be road index 2. As you guys can see, that's what it is over here. Now, of course, like normal, just bake your road when you're done. And making it smoother can definitely help with the train's performance, but you don't really need it smooth at all. It'll pretty much follow the road that you have set down, no matter how angled or curved it is. So once you have this, go ahead and save your map. And we're going to be moving on to working in the file system at this point. Now, something to keep in mind is that you want to remember the road index that you just created. So let's move into the file system. You're going to want to navigate to your unturned folder and then go into maps and then find the map that you just were working on. For me, that's the map editor tutorials map. Now what you're going to want to add to this map is the config.json file. Now, as you guys can see, uh, I have it here and this by default won't be in your map so you're going to have to create one. So the way that you can do that is go to new, if you're in Windows anyway, create a new text document and call it config. And I'm going to get rid of the original one here just so I can show you guys how to make it. And of course you're going to probably want to spell that correctly whatnot. Then when you open this up, you're going to want to go to file, save as, Go to text documents at the bottom and go all files and then save it as .json. And when you save it, you should have created the config.json here. If that doesn't work, uh, go ahead and look up other ways to do that. I'm sure there are other ways to create this file. All right, so what you're going to want to do is open up this file in some sort of text editor. For me, I'm using Notepad++ because that just happens to be the one that I prefer. And what you're going to want to do is add this text into your config.json file. Now just so you know, these are curly brackets, these are square brackets, and those are also curly brackets, and those are normal double quotes. So you're going to want to copy this pretty much exactly. Um, I think caps may not matter, but I would include those in as well, and especially with the indenting, make sure you include the indenting as well. Alright, so what does this mean, and where did I find this? So first of all, the only map to have trains in them is the Russia map. And so pretty much the way I found this is I was looking through the Russia map files, and I found the config.json that happened to be there. Now there's actually quite a lot of other stuff you can do in the config.json, and if you guys look at your own Russia map and look at the config.json there, you will see what is in that file. Now, I'm not going to do anything in this video about the other stuff you can add to the config.json file, but I may do that in the future, especially if you request it. So initially, all we need is just this trains line and a colon, and then you just need these square brackets opening and then a curly brackets inside those, and then you need your vehicle ID, which has to be 186 currently. I'm thinking once Nelson adds more trains in the future, you can change this to another ID of a train, but I have tried this with normal cars and it doesn't work. So at this point, you still need to have the 186. And then here is the road index that that train is going to be linked to. So you can actually change this depending on what road index you have. So if you have the very first one, you can do one, you could do two, three. Depending on the amount of roads you have in your map, it could be something as high as 40. It just depends on your map. So make sure that you keep that road index on whatever road you want it to be linked to. And once that train spawns, that train will not be able to remove to another road segment. And I'll show you what that means once we get into the map. All right, so once you have that set up, all you have to do is go back into your world. Actually, if you look at it inside the workshop again, you actually won't be able to see the train. That's the weird thing about this is there's no way to control it inside of the editor. You can't see the train appear there once you add that file. But once you go into single player, you will be able to see the train. So let's go into the single player for the world and let's check it out. Also, something that's quite nice about adding these trains is that you don't have to restart your unturned to do this. All right, so as you guys can see, we've got a train over here. And this is, once again, a test world that I use for all sorts of stuff. And here's the new road segment I created with the index of two. And here's the train on it. Now, through some testing, I figured out that whenever you spawn a train on a road index, it'll spawn randomly. So there's no way to get guarantee which side of it it'll spawn on. It'll essentially just spawn wherever it wants. And as you guys can see, this train is pretty much stuck to this road. You can't make it transfer to another road index 
or anything like that. And the nice thing about it is it will not drive off the road as well. It's pretty much stuck on here. And I think it's invincible to normal damage. So I don't think zombies can actually damage these trains or anything. So they're pretty reliable and stable once you have one set up. All right, so I've got a few other tests to go over with you guys, and that'll pretty much do it. All right, so here we are back in the world, and I actually switched the train from that road segment to this one over here. And on this one, I actually have a couple obstacles that are kind of interesting. So first of all, I've got a landscape obstacle, essentially a giant hill that the road goes over, and it doesn't really look like the train should be able to get over this segment, but as you guys will see, nothing really stops the train except for objects and the end of the road. Let's see how it performs over this train. And as you guys can see, it doesn't really make sense, but the train is able to go over that. Now, lastly, I've got one other test, and that is the object in the road test. And if you guys check the health of the train, even though we hit that at quite a fast speed, the health of the train doesn't decrease either. So putting objects in the way of your train track is a viable option in terms of stopping it and restricting the train to a certain area. All right, so that's pretty much it for adding a train to your map. Hopefully this gives you guys a good understanding of how to do that. I have done some other tests and as far as I can tell you cannot add multiple trains to your map like on different road segments or even on the same segment so hopefully that'll be something added in the future anyway guys thank you so much for watching please like this video if you enjoyed it and please subscribe if you want to see some more I will see you all later